Hi everyone, welcome to the UI tutorial for the Physics Toolbox. Here I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks for how to use the controls for this useful plugin. Okay, normally the first thing you'll want to do to get started is import in a control by double clicking or by clicking and dragging. Here I'm dragging in a simple motor A. I can position the motor dummy wherever I'd like on the screen, and you'll see its control panel appear at the top left of my stage window. I can go over right away and click the action button to see exactly what my motor does. When my mouse is not on the control box, you can see a red 1 in the top corner which shows the number of props targeted by this motor control. Currently there's only one, and its name is displayed near the bottom of the control panel. If there's more than one, this will read multiple. If I click and drag on the edges of my control panel, I can open up more tiles, to which I can easily add other controls by double clicking. Once I do that, I can choose between basic L1 controls and L2 structures which are basically machines made up of a number of L1 controls combined together. For now, I'll just go back to my first tile and double click on it to bring up the advanced options for that control. There's a select button here as well as a deselect one. If I click deselect then click on my motor, you'll see that the selected number will go back down to zero because there are currently no props under its control. Next, I'll choose the select button and then select my cube at the front. If I open the advanced options, I can select which axis I want my cube to rotate around. I'll choose the blue Z axis and press play to demonstrate. Next what I'll do is drag down on my control panel to open up another tile. I'm going to double click on this one and add in a shuttle control. Notice that when I open another control from dragging the tile UI, there is no dummy created and therefore no prop selected yet. The shuttle control's advanced options are a little different as well. I'll quickly select the sphere as my target. Now slider type controls like the shuttle go along the x-axis by default, so I'm going to move my cube to make way for my incoming sphere. Notice that when I select each prop now, its respective control panel will have a white border to indicate that this is the control panel associated with that prop. You can see when I press my action button that the sphere will begin to shuttle back and forth slowly, then faster when I increase the speed. I can go into the advanced options once again and reduce that range to see a faster back and forth. Okay, now I'm going to introduce you to the L2 structure controls. First thing I'm going to do here is import in an L2 structure, my tank tracks. You'll see a white control panel appear at the top left again. I'm going to want to import in an infinite plane to demonstrate these tracks as they'll need to move along the ground. Once I do, I'll go up right away and press the action button. You'll see that my tracks will jerkily move along. To get a smoother animation for tank tracks and other physics, make sure your playback is set to frame by frame. You can see the big difference when I turn that on. Since my tank tracks are a simple motion structure, they don't really have any advanced features other than select and deselect. So we'll move on to our next one. I'm going to import in my excavator structure here, and you'll see that it's pretty big. If I want to resize the size of my structures for any reason, I can do that just like any other prop. You can see that my control tile for the excavator is also unique. It contains clockwise and counterclockwise action buttons, which will affect the rotation of various parts of the excavator. Let's make it a bit faster by adjusting the values in the advanced options panel. You will also see here that there is an option to link to another structure or prop. I'm going to do that and then select my tank from the content manager to ensure that I get the entire structure selected and not one of the subprops. Once that's done, my excavator is now linked to the tank tracks and will follow its movements and everything. You can see now that I can move around with my tank and the excavator arm is attached to it. Now one last tip. Sometimes too many control tiles can be annoying to move around. So if you want, you can aggregate them into a single control panel. First, I'll close down my excavator control panel. Don't worry, the connection will still be there. Any prop that has its own control panel script will appear highlighted in blue in the content manager. You can see here that both of my structure names are highlighted in blue. What I can do now to pull all my panels into one place is to drag in another control tile and then select the excavator structure. Then I'll open the advanced panel and select my excavator prop as the target. You can see now that this control tile now controls my excavator once again. If I want to remove the Lua script from my dummy prop for whatever reason, 
or import in another one, I can do that by right clicking on it and selecting Remove Lua Script. What this will do is essentially remove the excavator script from that prop, so it will just be a regular dummy prop, and you'll see that it's no longer highlighted in blue. However, if I go into the advanced options and select the excavator as a target once again, the properties from that control panel will transfer over to my excavator dummy, but the only script holder will be the tank, which is still highlighted in blue. Remembering this color coding will become useful when you begin building more complex machines. Okay, so if you accidentally close down your control panel, there's an easy way to get it back up. Just right click on any of the objects that contain a script, in this case the tank, then go to Script and select Physics Toolbox. This will bring the control panel back up. However, because I removed the script from my excavator, when I try to do the same thing with that prop, nothing will happen. You can also minimize your control panel down to this little square as well if you'd like, by simply pressing the Minimize button. One final thing. I'm importing in a simple motor control here, and like every other prop, I can hold down the control and drag on the gizmo to create a duplicate. With the control dummies, this will also open up a new control panel as well, with its own unique values for the second dummy. As you can see, both dummies come with identical settings. If I select Merge from the Advanced Options panel, and then select the on-screen dummy associated with my other control panel, the control tile will merge into the other panel. If I want to close down the advanced options, I can also use this button here on the control panel. The move key allows me to move the entire thing down to another panel, as you see me doing here. If I press the trash can button, that will delete the entire control. Lastly, I can close all of the tiles in my entire panel by simply pressing the X key at the top right. Now you should be familiar with the UI. So what are you waiting for? Go have some fun with physics.